today we are going to talk about so this is this is a music theory and kind of like ear training like the goal of this is so you you can think about the music when you play because i think music is not just about like putting the finger in the right spot is 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 about thinking why you're doing the things that you do and we're going to talk about things that we do in all instruments all string players do this all wind players do this all brass players even percussion players practice this all the time and i think it's so important and we're going to talk about scales and we're like scales are all in patterns and um and there are also key signatures and then we're going to do a little bit of solfege at the end and some of you may already know some solfege so let's right dive right into it so in principle let's first of all talk what is a scale like why do you all practice scale like you if, if you go to your teacher to have a private lesson they tell you always practice your scale practice your scale right right i see some heads nodding yeah exactly it's because the scale is a collection of all the possible notes that can happen in a piece of music so it is as it says here it is a set of notes ordered by pitch so this is a scale this is also a scale or this is also a scale so the scale is kind of like the ABC of a piece of music. You can take notes from a scale to make a piece of music. So we are going to mostly talk about major and minor scales today. Um, but before we talk about scales, we got to understand that in major and minor scales, which are the most common scales that we all study, we all learn, we all play all the time, um, are composed of two different types of steps. The whole step, which is kind of, which is this one, or the half step. And the best way to understand that is to look in at the keyboard. So this is a piano keyboard. If you look at the keyboard, you see, you first of all recognize that there are white keys and there are black keys, right? So you also organize, you also recognize that the black keys on the keyboard are grouped into groups of three and groups of two, and they alternate in that manner. So there's three, two, three, two, three, two all across the keyboard, okay? So if we take a note from the keyboard, let's say the note C, the C is very easy to recognize because it's just below the first black key of the group of two. So if you take the black keys that are grouped in groups of two, the note below the first black key is the C. So now the first thing I would like you to do is to take a blank piece of paper, if you have it in there, and you can find a piece of paper, like even a napkin will do. Um, and I want you to, to draw one octave of the piano. You're going to start with this C and you're going to end with this C. And I want you to basically, and you can use this as a model, uh, draw a one octave piano key. So do, do you have paper in there handy? Yeah. If you don't go get quickly, go get some. And after you do, you, you do it, it should take you like no more than a minute to, to draw a piano. And it is just basically a set of white and black keys. And after you draw, which should take you like 45 seconds, uh, I want you to put the, the letter names of all the white keys. And you can, again, you can look at the screen here and copy what you see because it's very important that we know the keys in the piano. And I chose the piano because it's, I think it's the most universal of all instruments. I, actually, I should stop saying the piano. This is a keyboard. It can be a piano, it can be a harpsichord, it can be an organ, it can be an accordion, it can be a marimba, 
it can be a glockenspiel, it can be a vibraphone, all instruments that are keyboard based. They have the same pattern and it's the most universal because among ourselves we have string players like myself, we have wind players. I don't know if we have singers. Does anybody here sing? Are you in choir? Miles, you're in choir? Great. Mm -hmm. So you have your own keyboard in your in your in your body here, right? Okay. So let me know, let me know. You can unmute yourself and say ready when you are done uh, drawing one octave of the piano. Again, you're going from this C, actually from any C to the C above it. Ready. Ready, okay. So just to double check, you should all have um, 13 keys. 13 keys, I have them. eight white keys and five black keys. Okay, I have one person ready. I'm waiting for the other ones. Ready. Okay, who has the prettiest piano drawing? Do you wanna show in the camera your piano? Arabella, I'm, you look like you want to show your piano. Yeah? Oh, look at that. That looks really neat. It's a tiny little tiny piano. Okay, excellent. Thank you for sharing your drawing. It's beautiful. Um, okay, so we were talking about half steps and whole steps. Um, the half steps are two keys that are next to each other. <clears throat> So a black key and a white key are always a half step. So it's easy to know what, pardon me, a half step. A half step is always a black key and a white key next to it. it can either be above it or below it. There are two exceptions to that that it's very easy to remember. E to F, as you can see here, there is no black key in between. So E to F and the same with B to C, they are called natural half steps. And if you look at the keys, they are next to each other because there's no black key in between. So E to F, and you can write this down so you always remember. So tonight when you go to bed before sleeping, you can, re you, you can review that E to F and B to C are natural half steps. Then all the other half steps in music are a combination of bl a black key and a white key. Okay, now a whole step is when you skip a key. So if you group, for instance, the C and a D, that's a whole step, right? Because there's this black key in between. A D and, a, and an E is another whole step because again, you are skipping this key, this E flat key. Now, this is when it gets tricky because there's no black key between E and F. You have to skip the F and go to the F sharp. So the whole step is E to F sharp. Now, there's a lot of talk here. Let's go to the music. Um, so you the way to recognize whole steps and half steps, actually I have a, a, a way to make it easy for you to, to remember this. So if you, if you hear a half step, a whole step is the... <coughs> Right? Which is how you start happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Right? So that is a whole step. So if something sounds to you happy birthday, like it can be any key or any key, it always sounds like happy birthday. So if it sounds like a happy birthday, it's a whole step. Now, the half step is my favorite. Did you watch the movie Jaws with the, the scary sharks in it? So the half step is this. Right, so that's a half step and you can see it's like really crunchy. It's like, if I play it together, it's like, it's 
really painful to, to hear, right? That's a half step, okay? So now, why are we talking about whole steps and half steps? Well, because the major scale pattern and also the, the, the minor scale pattern is all a bunch of whole steps and half steps. But before we do that, I want you to go to your workbook, which is, uh, let me find, in the third page of your workbook, you have whole and half steps. So this is in treble clef because we're focusing on treble clef this week. And I want you to look at each set of two measures and tell me if what you see is a whole step or a half step. And I want you to write it down, okay? And so this is, so this is also a, 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 a visual exercise, but it's also an oral exercise. So I'm gonna play the first one. So this is number one, the first one, the first two measures, and it sounds like this. Now you tell me, or actually write it down if that sounds like the, the jaws of if that sounds like happy birthday. Let's go to the number two. C and D. Number three. And this is again in your workbook, the third page. Number three is a descending. Number four, right here we have an E and a D. Oops, I have a double uh, a bar line there. That's my mistake. So E to D. Does that sound like Happy Birthday or the theme of Jaws? Next, which is the first interval in the second line, is a G to an A. Sorry. Now this is a B and a C. This might be a little tricky. Remember when we talk about the exceptions to the rule, this is one of them, B to C. And since you have a drawing of a piano next to you that you beautifully made, um, you are welcome to look at it and see if we are skipping a key or if we're playing keys that are next to each other. In other words, they're adjacent to each other. If they're next to each other, it's a half step. If, they, if we're skipping a key, it's a whole step. Here we go. Next is a D and an E. We have already seen that one, but not in an ascending way. And finally, F natural and G. Okay. Let's see if we have some answers here. Um, Eric. Can you unmute yourself, Eric? Huh. Uh, can't unmute. Oh, there we go. Eric, what do you have for the first one? Excellent, thank you. Livia. Livia, what do you have for the second one? Whole. Whole step, excellent. Dimitri, what do you have for the third one? Half. Half, exactly. Amelia, what do you have for number four? The E down to an D. Oh, I can hear you, Amelia. Hole, exactly. Like a like a golf course, a hole like in, in, in golf? Ah no, W H O I Z hole. Josh, tell me why you have G to A. Hole. Excellent. Okay. Um Roman. Um 
Tell me B2D, uh, sorry, B2C, B2C. Ah. Ha. Excellent. You cut. This was the hard one because it's a, it's a, it's a tricky one. It's a natural half step. Okay. Uh, let me see. Who else has their camera on? Mateo and Isabel. Which one of you wants to do D to E? Okay, Mateo. Whole step. And, and Isabel, since while we're at it, what do you have in the last one? Hall, exactly. Very good. Excellent, you guys. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. Um, so, now that we know we are masters of whole and half steps, we are going to study the major scale pattern. And the scale pattern, you just need to memorize, just the way you memorize the multiplication table at school, like, like 2 times 1, 2, 2 times 2, two 4, exact, etc. You have to do it the same with the major scale. And this is the pattern, it's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And you're welcome to write that in. So you just need to write to, and, and, and this is an example. This is the C major scale. We have a whole step, D to, C to D, a whole step, D to E, another whole step, and then a half step, a natural half step, E to F. Then we have three whole step, F to G, G to A, and A to B, three consecutive whole steps, and then finally a half step. And the major scale, you all know, it sounds like this. <laughs> So it's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Okay? That's very easy to remember, isn't it? So, what I want you to do now is like go to, back to your workbook. Go back to your workbook and I'll tell you which page it is this time. In your workbook, is it the first page? So what I have here is I have a page that has the notes, but it's completely empty of sharps and flats. There are no sharps and flats, except for the last one because it's the E flat major scale. So it has to start on an E flat. Otherwise there are no, so I want you to figure out if you can figure out the sharps and flats of this scale. I'll give you a hint. Two of these scales require sharps and two of these scales require flats. And I want you to write them in. And remember again, the goal is to have whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half. And I wanna put that here in front of you so you have it as a reference. Uh, I just failed at doing that. Let me see again. There we go. Come on, there. So that's, that's the pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, okay? Go. You have one minute to do that. So you are adding sharps and flats to that scale. You are welcome to have all the reference, uh, references at your disposal. You can use the screen here that has the patterns, or you can use the piano that you have, that you have uh, written in your, in, your, in your sheet of paper. And if you are done, just let me know that you're done. Again, I'll repeat the hint. Two of the scales require sharps and two of the scales require flats. Another hint is no scale in that worksheet requires more than th three sharps of flats. And I mean three as in the same note. So the E flat, for instance, the E flat at the beginning and the E flat at the end have flats, but that's, that counts as one because it's the same note.
You're done, Miles? Okay, you're miles ahead of us. Good job. Excellent. So if you practice the theory behind the scales, then when you play the scales, you'll, have, you'll be much more conscious of what you're playing and you'll play it better. You'll play it more in tune. You're playing with more accuracy. And let's be honest. I mean, scales are not just an exercise. They show up in real music all the time. Like, you know this one. That's a scale. It's just like a twisted scale that goes up and down. It's a, it's a, it goes up and then goes down and then goes back up. It's a scale. You all know that melody. Okay. How many of you have the first two ready to go? First two, okay, a few of you, great. Okay, let's reveal the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit this for a second, and let's, let's reveal the answer. Um, how about Charles, Caroline, and I don't know who that, th uh, it doesn't tell me what the third name is. Can you guys unmute yourself, yourselves? Are there three people there? I only see two. Uh, yeah, there are three of us. Okay, so collectively, can you tell us what are the the sharps of flats you had to add here in the first scale? Um, we added a flat in the third measure. I mean, yeah, flat in the third measure. You added a flat here. On on, first of all, tell me what scale is this? So it's, it's D major, right? Because these are all major scales. So it's, a, it's, it's, we didn't add a flat, we added a sharp. A sharp, that is correct. It's a uh, sharp, so it's a. Uh... Yeah, oh. Are you still there? Yeah, so you added a sharp on the F, that is correct. Is there any other sharp? C. -C. There is the C. Yeah. yeah, I think Caroline said it, right? Or was that Lola? Um, it's me, no, Caroline. It's me. Yeah. Caroline, okay. So uh, that is correct. It's F sharp and C sharp. Excellent. Now, thank you guys. Uh, Miles, tell us what you added in the second scale. Uh. C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. Excellent. So for a total of three, C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. Very good. Uh, let me see. Let's pick someone else. How about the people that are invisible? Audrey. Audrey, are you there? Is there Audrey? I don't see a response. Okay. Someone else. Livia. Livia, what do you have in the third scale? I have A flat and B flat. Almost. One of those is right. So F to G is a whole step. You're right. And then we need another whole step. So G to A natural. What is that interval? Whole step. Whole step. So we don't need a flat on the A. 
And then we need a half step here between the third scale degree and the fourth scale degree. So A to B, what is that? A natural to B natural. It's a whole step. So we need, to make a half step, we need, what do we need here? We need a B flat. So that's the only one. Then the other half step is between E and F, which is already given to us by nature. Okay, very good, thank you. And this is a tricky one. Who would like to go for the E flat major scale? E flat major scale. Anyone? Um, Our, it, yes, it, Caroline, tell us. Uh, it has A flat and B flat. A flat and B flat in addition to the E flat that you already have. Excellent, very good. Okay, now we are going to, uh, we're gonna do some solfege, okay? Oh, Audrey, you can unmute, I'm sorry. Okay, I just saw it. Thank you, Audrey, for letting me know. Okay. Uh, this is wrong. My computer skills, guys, are not as good as yours. Okay, so I, I would like for you, for you to now look at the screen here. And if we give every, like, so we're gonna talk about solfege. Um, and solfege is a very good tool for you guys to learn because it gives you, it, it gives you syllables for you to sing. So for instance, this is a, the, these are the syllables that are commonly used. So this would be, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. So if you just know the syllables to sing, then you can sing pretty much anything like Do, Do, Re, Do, Sol, Fa, Do, Do, Re, Do, La, Sol, Do, 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 La, Sol, Sol, Fa, Mi. You can sing anything. Okay, so um, this is a very important tool. And since we're doing this scale today, I picked some exercises for you to, um, to, 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 to do it. So um, again, if you all unmute yourselves and sing along with me, unmute yourself so we don't hear each other singing, so you can only hear me. Um, so let's all sing note by note that you, the, the notes that you see here. So this is going to start with this C. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Okay, sorry. I, I ask you to to mute yourself, not unmute. I'm sorry, I think I, I said the opposite. So you all have to be on mute, except for me. So I, you all get to hear me, but you don't hear each other. Let's do it again. One, two, ready, go. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. And we can go back down. Do, si, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Okay, so let's quickly go to our workbook. And let's go to the last page of the workbook. Uh, well, I don't know if it's the last page or not. It's the fourth page. And there's some exercises. We will not do all of them, but uh, this is kind of for you to take home and practice for, for later review. It's mostly a scale, okay? And we do it with a pulse. So let's start with number 25. And uh, the hard part of this is that it doesn't have the syllables anymore. Oh, you, you guys can see that, right? Here, oh, no, wrong, 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 wrong. Um. This is what I meant. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of singing and um, just try to remember the syllables. So C is Do, D is Re, E is Mi, Fa, and then Sol. For number 25, 
those are the only notes you need. So let's, at this tempo, I'm gonna play along and sing along, and everyone singing. One, two, ready, go. Do, do, re, re, mi, mi, fa, fa, sol, sol, fa, fa, mi, mi, re, re, do, do. Very easy, right? Let's move on to the next one. 26. 1, 2, 26. Do, 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 re, mi, 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 fa, sol, 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 fa, mi, 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 re, do, 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 do. It's kind of like a nice melody for, um, kind of like a, a, a nice melody for, um, just to practice the solfege, okay? Let's move on to 27. This has, a, this has a little bit of back and forth. It goes up, it goes down. But it's always, what I like about this is always stepwise motions. It's only whole steps and half steps, which is the subject of today. So 27, 27, here we go. One, two, ready, go. Do, re, do, re, mi. Okay, so I'm going to leave 28 and 29 for you to do at home. And you know, the better, actually, the better you get at, 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 at solfege, um, the, the more accurate you play because you are thinking, you know, I, I, I play viola and I, I sometimes ask people like, the, people say like, that's the third finger. Oh, that's finger number two, that's high two, low two, but they don't know what note they're playing. Therefore, how can you think about intonation if you don't even know what note you're playing? So this is a great way for you to be so conscious of, of the notes that you're playing. And you know, after you get better at it, you can, you can, you can do anything like fa la do si la si sol la fa la do si la si sol la fa la do si la si sol la fa sol la so fa so mi fa re fa la so fa so mi fa re fa la so fa so mi fa re. That's Kreutzer number two, and you and you can solfege anything, and like fa fa sol la la sol fa mi re re mi fa fa mi mi fa fa sol la la sol fa mi re re mi fa mi re re. You can sing anything, and always remember, do is always C. That's the only rule. Do is always C. Okay, so now I want you to. Let me see. Let, let's do a little bit of ear training because I think it's important since we already, we just sang a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a piece of music. So you have a, a staff paper there. You have a uh, music paper, right? Yeah, okay. So in the music paper, I want you to get ready four measures. Four measures in four, four. This is in 4-4. Four, four. It's going to be in C major, which means no sharps or flats. We're going to talk about key signatures here in a second. No sharps or flats. C major, four measures. It's mostly stepwise motion. So step, whole steps and half steps. Although there are some jumps, some arpeggiation. Okay. Here we go. This is the tempo. One, two, three, four. are the, the whole four bars. So the, 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 the your strategy should be in the next time that I'm gonna play, 
just get the rhythm. Focus on the rhythms. See if you can nail the rhythm. And there are quarter notes. There are, it's mostly quarter notes. There's a few eight notes and there's also half notes. Okay, here we go. One, two, and let's see if you can have a system to quickly write the rhythm. You don't have to write perfectly beautiful quarter notes. It's like quarter, 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 quarter. You basically have to write as I am playing. You have to write at the same speed uh, at the same speed uh, that you're you are playing, okay? One, two, three, four. So by far, measure three is the hardest one because there's leaps in there. Measure, f measure three, their leaps is not stepwise. But the other measures should be recognizable to you because they're all stepwise. Okay, raise your hand in front of the camera if you have the rhythm already. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna do one more time. Well, I'm gonna do several more times. But this time, see if you can get more rhythms. More quarter notes, more half notes, more eighth notes. One, two, three, four. like now you can start putting in some notes in other words figure out the pitches the starting note is C it starts on C on the C middle C which is in the below the staff that's the first note Josh you have a question no okay you were just stretching okay so starts in C I'm gonna play it again. Actually, I'm gonna play the first two bars so we can figure those out, okay? It's always a good idea to work in small chunks. One, two, three, four. So the rhythm for the first bar is quarter, 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 quarter. There are four quarter notes in the first bar. The second bar, we have quarter, quarter, half. Yeah? Okay. So see if you can get the pitches for the first two bars. One, two, three, four. It's so important to listen, listen carefully. It's the same when you're playing orchestra, when you're playing in band, right? It's very important to be attentive to what others are playing. You always should compare what your part sounds like in comparison to other people. And it's hard when you're playing in orchestra because you only have your part, right? You only, you only see what you play and you have to figure out what others play just by ear. You don't get to see what others play. You just figure out by ear. So this is why we work so hard. We musicians work our entire lives to train our ears to pretty much listen 
everything. Now when my phone beeps, I know what, what note it is. It's always on this C. That means I got a text. When I hear that C, I got that, a text. And when I go in the street and I, and, and I hear random sounds, oh, that's an F sharp, that's an A. The bells at the church nearby sound. I, I can tell what notes they are. It's because I work so hard in training my ear. There are people that are born that way, actually. There are people that are born with perfect pitch. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure some of you have that. They just like, no. They know what note it is. I wasn't born with that. I had to work to get that. Okay? So, who has the pitches for the first two bars? Josh, want to tell us? First bar. Tell us this first bar. E, D, E, D. Excellent. Livia, tell us the second bar. Excellent. So it's C and the, the sense to be. By the way, is that a whole step or a half step? Listen to it. Is it whole or half? Anyone? Whole or half? Oh, it's half actually. It's half. Listen to it. Jobs. Okay, let's move on to measure three and four. We gotta bring this baby home. This is the hard part. I might help you with this one. Measure three and four. One, two, three, four. So the hint is the third bar has the same rhythm of measure one, which is four quarter notes. Quarter, 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 okay? So I'm skipping some notes here, right? I'm gonna play again. One, two, three, four. What is beautiful there is measure three is an arpeggio and then it's a scale down all stepwise. What's the rhythm of measure four? Anyone? Miles? Yeah? Uh, four? Yeah, measure four. Two eighth notes, uh, quarter note, and then a half note. Exactly, excellent. And who has the the pitches for measure three? Arabella, Arabella, tell us. Um, D E G E. Exactly, C E G E. Perfect, Arabella. And what are the notes? For measure four? Anyone? Anyone who has to say anything yet? And May, you want to give it a shot? Um, F E D F E D F E D and then one more note. C. C, exactly. Very good. Excellent, you guys. Very good. I, I understand this this could be really hard. And it's 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 something we all have to keep working on. Like and I, I I'm not kidding you. Like when you hear something on TV, try to figure out what note is that. And how many of you are stream players, by the way? Right? So stream players, all the stream players in the world know this note. That's the A. Everyone knows that note because violin is tuned like this, and then viola is tuned like this. Like all the string players know the A. So the A. Try to just like do this next time when you open your case to practice. Try to, if you can sing the A without getting any help, without plucking your string, without playing the piano, without touching your tuner. Just like open your case and see. Think think that note. Have it here in your brain, and then. 
you know, la is right there. You have it. I promise you, you have it. So just do that experiment. Okay? So, let, 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 let's just quickly talk about a couple of things here before we, we wrap it up. So that's, that's the pattern of the major scale. Make sure you remember that. All major scales have the same pattern. There are 12 of them. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. I'm just gonna give you the pattern of the natural minor scale. There are, all, there are several types of minor scale, but this is the natural minor. It's whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. <laughs> it's tricky. Whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. So if you check your second page of your workbook, you have some work to do there. And you're gonna have to find the sharps or flats to determine whole half, whole, whole half, whole, whole. So you have four scales. I'll leave you that for homework, okay? And if you join us again next week, which I hope you do, we can talk about it, okay? Now, there's something that kind of like uh, arrives um, organically here is the order of sharps and flats. This is another thing you have to memorize. Um, the order of sharps and flats are F, C, G, D, A, E, B. And the flats come in the same order but reverse, starting with B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So when you see, when, when your teachers ask you, like how many sharps or flats are in whatever key, and you say two, you know those two are F and C, right? It always starts with F. If there's one sharp, it will always be, oh, I shouldn't say always, but like most of the time it will be, most likely it will be F sharp, the, 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 the sharp involved. So you know that G major has one sharp, which is F sharp, right? So this is just something you have to memorize. And I will send you the, 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 the handouts of, of, of this presentation later today or tomorrow. Uh, so you, but like, this is just something you need to remember, like F, C, G, D, A, E, B. I know in solfege too, because it's easier for me. So it's Fa, Do, Sol, Re, La, Mi, Si. And, and the flats are Si, Mi, La, Re, Sol, Do, Fa. Okay, so that's just something you have to, you have to be fluent at. It's like learning, learning the A, B, C. Like everyone here knows the ABC, okay? So if you think about the order of sharps and flats, there's this cool graph here that I found online that is really cool that tells you all the keys that we know and how many sharps or flats are in there. So for instance, C major has none. Then G major has one sharp and that is F sharp. And then D major has two, therefore it's F and C. So this is just something that you will learn organically, but you have to learn this first, first of all. And uh, it will take you a week to memorize this and know it really quickly. So just quiz yourself three times a day, every day this week until next Tuesday. And I assure you that you would have learned the order of sharps and flats. And you should know that the flats are just the same as the sharps in reverse order. So sharps go left to right, flats, flats go left to, uh, yeah, right to left, okay? That's just very simple. And uh, I will send you also this graph because I just think it looks really cool. And, and, and it has all the, all the sharps. It looks, it looks more sophisticated than it is, but it's really not complicated because again, if you learn this, you will know anything, okay? How many of you guys are already in Gitsis? Can I see your hands, hands up? A few of you, okay. Yeah, so Gitsis, for those of you who are new to us, Gitsis is the Greater Twin Cities Youth Symphonies. We're a program of, of youth orchestras and uh, we meet weekly. We have, we have around, uh, we have nine orchestras in our program and um, we meet weekly and we perform several concerts a season. We run during the school year from September to May and we perform among other great uh, venues at Orchestra Hall in downtown Minneapolis. Um, 
So if you are new to us, I urge you to check us out. Go to gitisgtcys.org and you can see all the fabulous things that, that Gitsis does. Uh, again, there are nine orchestras and they, they are there for several different levels of different levels of skill. And like our top orchestra actually is really cool. Like they are pretty much pre-college orchestra. These are mostly junior and senior, juniors and seniors in high school who perform at a, at a high level and in, they tour internationally. They go to other countries to perform. Um, I, be, I believe next year they're going to Italy to, to perform, uh, to tour basically. They go to one city, they play, they go on the bus, they go to another city and play and they, in between they go see really cool places like uh, the Coliseum in Rome and, and, and things like that. Um, but it's really, and, and they've been to many other countries. They've been to, Ar to Argentina, Germany, Austria, Poland, Hungary, uh, Spain, many cool destinations. And they kind of have gotten to see the world that way. Um, so I, and all the other orchestras that we have are equally cool. Um, Symphon Symphonia East and West, which is one of the orchestras that I do. We do a schools in the metro area of Minneapolis, St. Paul, and we go to elementary schools and, 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 and show the orchestra to, to little kids who are about to make up their minds about what instruments to, to, to play in, in, in middle school. So it's, it's just a very neat thing that you should go check it out. So go to gtcysgitsis.org check out all the cool programs that we have. And um, yes, thank you so much for coming. It's been a joy to, to, to work on, on theory. So make sure you do the other things in your workbook that I gave you. Um, work on the, on the natural minor scales and um, add the sharps and flats in there. Again, it's natural minor. Uh, there are other types of minor scales out there, but we are working on natural minor, which is the very basic. So next time, next session, if you join, which I, I really hope you do come, we're going to talk about more advanced things. We're going to talk about intervals. So intervals are, well, we'll talk about next week, but intervals are the opposite of steps. Is when you skip notes. And sometimes you skip one note or you can skip many notes. So steps are notes that are next to each other. Intervals are not. Um, so we're going to talk about them and, um, and you're going to have other exercises and we're going to do some solfege in bass clef. Bass clef is a little more sophisticated. Do I have any cellists here? Cellists? Okay. So for you guys, it's going to be easier because you already know bass clef, but for violinists who do not know bass clef, this is, this is your opportunity to, to learn a little bit of that. And we'll do a little bit more of dictation, which is very good for your ear. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming. I'll stick here. I'll stay here if you have any questions about any of the exercises we did, or if you have any questions about gitses or orchestras. Yeah. So what we do during the year is quite different from this. Uh, during the year, we actually play our instruments in a, in an orchestra when we actually can have people next to each other in a room. And um, yeah, so I'll stick around here. If you have any questions, feel free to, to ask me. Otherwise you are free to go. Thank you so much for showing up today.